Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthai Budale Shimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste, Saraswata Deve Gauravani Pracharane, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtachari Shatarane, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Seed Veda Gadada Shivasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Reading from Srimad Bhavam Canto 10, Chapter 14, Verse 15. Tatet jalas tam tava sajagat papu. Kimena dristam bhagavan stataiva. Kimvasu dristam hiri me tadaiva. Kim no sapadyeva punarvya darsi. Yeah. 
Tat Na Chet If Njala Stam Situated in the water Tava Your Sat Real Jagat Sheltering the entire universe Vapu Transcendental body Kim Why Me By me no, Dristam was not seen. Bhagavan, O Supreme Lord, Tada Eva. At that very time, Kim, Y, Va, or Su Dristam, perfectly seen. Hridi, within the heart, me, by me, Tada Eva, just then. Kim, why, no, not, who, on the other hand, sapari, suddenly, eva, indeed, punna, again, vidarshi, was seen. Translation, my dear Lord, if your transcendental body which shelters the entire universe is actually lying upon the water, then why were you not seen by me when I searched for you? And why, though I could not envisage you properly within my heart, did you then suddenly reveal yourself? Purport Lord Brahma here refers to his experience of the dawn of cosmic creation. As described in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma took birth on the seat of a giant lotus whose stem emanated from the navel of Narayana. Brahma was bewildered as to his whereabouts, function, and identity, and therefore he tried to trace out the source of the lotus stem, searching for clear information. Unable to find the personality of God, he returned to his seat and engaged in severe austerities, having been ordered to do so by the transcendental voice of the Lord, who could be heard but not seen. After long meditation, Brahma saw the Lord, but then again lost sight of him. Thus, Brahma concludes that the transcendental body of the personality of God is not material, but rather an eternal spiritual form endowed with inconceivable mystic potencies. In other words, Lord Brahma should not have challenged the personality of God as the Lord of all mystic power. So the previous verse talked about uh, Narayana, who is the one who is uh, uh, lying on the water and who is the shelter of the jivas. Uh, so continuing with that uh, idea about the water, uh, he is referring here to his uh, experience where he woke up on the lotus and he didn't know where he was. Everything was darkness and he climbed down the lotus stem and there was water there and that's all he could see. And uh, he became very puzzled and he climbed up on the lotus again and then a voice said, Tapa! Huh? And then he began to meditate, and then he saw the Supreme Lord, and the Supreme Lord gave him instructions in the form of the uh, four verses of the Bhagavatam. Uh, so at that time, he couldn't see the Lord, uh, in spite of the fact that the lotus comes out of the navel of Vishnu. Uh, so in the previous verse, he was talking about uh, you are Narayana, uh, who is the, uh, lying on the water and is also the source of the jivas, the shelter of the jivas. Uh, so then he says, well, I was on the water, but I couldn't even see you. Uh, in spite of the fact that you are everything, you are the universe, etc. Uh, I, all I could see was the lotus. I couldn't see the universe. I couldn't see you. Uh, but in the previous verse, he already said, all of this is real. Uh, Vishnu is real, you are real, material world is real, etc. So, uh, he, uh, here, here again he refers to the body of the Lord as being the universe, Sajjagat Vapu, uh, uh, situated on the water. And uh, he says, I couldn't see that form at all. So, uh, the conclusion is that uh, though the Lord is real, he cannot be seen with normal eyes. 
And even if we have transcendental eyes or spiritual eyes, uh, the Lord cannot be seen unless he wants to be seen. So he will reveal himself. Uh, and by his will, he will be visible to uh, a person. And if he doesn't want to, he won't be visible to that person, even if the person is qualified. So we see that Narada Muni, uh, in the story in the first canto, he saw the Lord once, and then he couldn't see him again. And the Lord said, I will not reveal myself in this lifetime in order to increase your longing and consequently raise your uh, attraction and your devotion. So unless the Lord wants to, he will not reveal himself. Uh, so the, in spite of the fact we may be qualified, it is our ultimately the will of the Supreme Lord. Nevertheless, the Lord also is controlled by bhakti. Uh, so he is subject to the desire of the devotees. So if the des uh, devotee really desires to see the Lord and he's a great devotee, then the Lord will reveal himself. So he reveals himself even to an unqualified person like um, Gajendra, who was not even a, a pure devotee. He was simply calling prayers to get rescued and the Lord manifested his form to him. Uh, so in extraordinary cases, uh, the Lord will do this even to people who are not so qualified huh, because of devotion. Uh, so uh, the Lord reveals himself when he so desires. Usually that is in relation to devotees. But then we have exceptional cases because it's up to the Lord. So he revealed himself even to demons like Putana. Putana got a body in the spiritual world without any qualification and then she could see the Lord. So it is the will of the Lord that's most important there. But generally it is the uh, devotion of the devotee which instigates the Lord to show his mercy and reveal himself. Huh? So uh, the Lord is real, but uh, not subject to uh, material vision or material mind, material senses. So just because he cannot be revealed to the material senses, that does not mean that he doesn't exist. It's just simply we can't see him. We're not qualified to see him. Just as uh, if we cannot see uh, things with our eyes that are too small like bacteria or viruses. It doesn't mean they don't exist. It's just we can't see them with our eyes because our eyes can't see that small. Huh? Or uh, in the sky with a telescope we can see certain things. Uh, but uh, with our normal eye we can. It doesn't mean they don't exist. It's just beyond the capacity of our eye. So similarly, uh, the Supreme Lord is beyond the capacity of all of our senses and our mind and our intelligence. But it doesn't mean he doesn't exist. So, uh, we can see the Lord, uh, but there's a certain method of doing that. And that is the process of devotion. If we try the other processes, they do not give that realization. Uh, so the, uh, therefore the uh, jnanis and the yogis, uh, they don't see the Lord, what to speak of, uh, serve the Lord directly. Uh, whereas a person like uh, Mother Yasoda can directly serve Krishna, touch Krishna, catch Krishna, tie Krishna up. But yogis and jnanis can't do that at all. And they're not qualified for that. Uh, so it is the, uh, the Lord will reveal himself to the devotees and not to the other persons. Uh, that is a special quality of devotion. Uh, so uh, Brahma uh, could not see the Lord by his own endeavor. But the Lord was merciful to him and he gave him instruction. And he said, you meditate on me. So though the word tapa is used, which means literally austerity uh, or sense control, uh, Brahma did not do tapas like uh, Haranikasipu and stand on his tiptoes for a thousand years or whatever. Instead, he concentrated on the form of the Supreme Lord, which is a type of bhakti. 
So we should not think this is just austerity that brings about the Supreme Lord. It was meditation on the Lord that is a form of bhakti. And because of that bhakti, the Lord revealed himself. Huh? So we shouldn't think that tapas was able to, or austerity was able to reveal the Lord. No, it was bhakti that revealed the Lord. The Lord manifested himself because Brahma meditated on him, not on impersonal Brahman or something else. Huh? So again, uh, the Lord has uh, revealed himself because of devotion. Uh, Brahma meditated for a thousand years and then uh, the Lord revealed himself. Uh, of course, uh, seeing is not the only goal of the devotee, is the one sense. Hmm? So seeing is one sense, but there's so many other senses involved also. So therefore, Brahma not only saw the Lord, he also heard the Lord. He, learned, he heard the instruction, tapa, and then the Lord gave him instructions in the form of the Chatu Sloki. So uh, his, uh, he saw the Lord, he saw the spiritual world, but he also got instructions from the Lord. So his ear was also uh, qualified to hear the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in this way, all the senses become qualified by the Lord's mercy, and then the Lord reveals himself to all the senses, uh, spiritual senses of the devotee. And the devotee is able to have a uh, wonderful experience of uh, the Lord's um, form, nature, etc. So, uh, after the endeavor of Brahma, the Lord revealed himself by his will. But Brahma obviously uh, had been come qualified, and therefore the Lord revealed himself. And, of course, there was another particular um, goal in uh, this meditation. That was that Brahma had to do his job, create the universes or the worlds. But he uh, was puzzled. He didn't know how to do it. So he didn't have knowledge, proper knowledge for his service. But after he saw the Lord, after he got instructions on Chattu Sloki Bhagavatam, and then suddenly he had all the knowledge to create all the bodies for the living entities and the different planetary systems, etc. So, uh, not only he saw the Lord and not only he got instructions from the Lord, the Lord bestowed knowledge on him so he could do his particular uh, function of uh, creating bodies for living entities, etc. Huh? Uh, so in this way the Lord uh, revealed not just form, but his wonderful qualities and also knowledge so that Brahma could carry out creation. Huh? Uh, so what this illustrates ultimately is that even Brahma, who is the head of the universe, is dependent on the Lord, dependent for his knowledge and power of creation. Uh, he's a guna avatar, but he gets that power because of the Supreme Lord and his will. Uh, uh, he, uh, he cannot do anything without his uh, sanction. And, of course, uh, Brahma is a great devotee, and therefore the Lord reveals himself, gives instructions, and gives him certain powers to do things. Uh, but uh, because the Lord didn't reveal himself immediately, this shows the dependence of Brahma upon the Supreme Lord. So some people will think that uh, Brahma, because he is head of the universe, is supreme. He does everything. He's carrying out the creation by his mind uh, very, very skillfully. But uh, this uh, uh, statement here and the statements and uh, the description in the second canto reveal that it was actually Supreme Lord's power given to him. He cannot do anything independently. But why did the Lord give him the power? Because he did have devotion. He was qualified as a devotee. So therefore, he got the particular powers. Huh? Uh, so uh, he asks here, uh, I couldn't see you. Why was that? And then uh, suddenly, why did you suddenly appear? Uh, so the answer is because the Lord uh, understood that he does have devotion. And uh, he does have a certain function to fulfill 
in relation to the uh, material world universe. So therefore, uh, the Lord came to bestow that particular uh, function and power upon Brahma so that he could uh, do his job properly. So ultimately, it is mercy of the Lord. Everything depends on that. Uh, so though we do have bhakti, ultimately, uh, bhakti is dependent on mercy. And uh, through that bhakti, the Lord reveals himself. But that again is mercy. Depends on his particular choice when he wants to reveal himself to the devotee. Hmm? Uh, so that, of course, goes for uh, people in the material world. Uh, the Lord does not reveal himself, but if one is a devotee, he may reveal himself. And so, uh, of course, the revelation usually comes after sadhana bhakti. When a devotee is in bhav bhakti, the Lord may reveal himself. But there it is explained that though the, one can see the Lord, uh, one is qualified to see the Lord in bhav bhakti, it may not be uh, constant. Maybe once, as in the case of uh, uh, Narada Muni. Hmm? Uh, so it is not all the time. In Prema, it can be more often. But even in Prema, even for the Nitya Siddhas, the Lord may disappear also. Huh? So even with the highest persons like the gopis, the Lord disappears. <laughs> so by his will, he will do certain things. Huh? So, of course, uh, f for the highly qualified devotees who are in prema or nitya siddhas, uh, the disappearance of the Lord is for pastimes, which will increase the bliss. If one is not in prema, if one is in bhava stage, the Lord may not reveal himself in order to increase the uh, devotion of the person. Huh? So, therefore, uh, some of the gopis could not meet the Lord at the Ras Lila. Why? To increase their devotion by separation. And when they were purified, then they got to meet the Lord and see the Lord and associate with the Lord. Huh? So in Bhava and Prema, and therefore the Lord has certain uh, reasons why he will disappear or whatever. In the case of Bhava, it is to strengthen the, uh, that Bhava until it turns into Prema. Hmm? For Sadakas, then the sadhaka is not qualified to see the Lord. Uh, his senses are uh, covered by material energy, so he cannot see the Lord properly. Huh? His attraction for the Lord is not sufficient that the Lord will reveal himself in most cases. Huh? But then we have exceptional cases of Kripa where the Lord reveals himself to a devotee even though they're not so qualified. Huh? But in general, the sadhakas don't get to uh, see the Lord directly. So, the solution for these devotees is that they get to see the Lord through scriptures. Uh, so they can know the Lord to some degree by carefully hearing the conclusion of scriptures. That is, they uh, hear about the form, qualities, and activities of the Lord from the scripture. So that is their way of associating with the Lord at the stage of sadhana. So that is why scripture is very important. This is how we get to know about the Lord in sadhana bhakti. Hmm? If we had a process that promised, yes, you can see the Lord and it will be revealed later on once you're completely pure and you're in prema, but now we're not going to discuss anything, then as about you do your sadhana bhakti and be devoted to him, it would be very difficult to do. Uh, uh, because uh, we don't know uh, the form, qualities, or activities of that Lord. So how can we develop a loving relationship with him? Uh, so, uh, on the other hand, we're not qualified because we're still covered by material energy. We don't have spiritual eyes. So the solution is through the scriptures. We get to uh, hear about the form, qualities, and activities of the Lord, in spite of the fact that we are in the material world. Uh, how does that uh, work? Uh, it is because scripture itself is also spiritual. It is not material. The words are not material. They are spiritual. Hmm? 
But if we have material words, no effect. I mean, material ears, no effect. So therefore, it is said that we have to hear with devotion. Then we get the right conclusions. Uh, we get the right appreciation of the Bhagavatam. So, even though it is not the highest devotion, it is a little devotion, which will later mature into bhava and prema, still, even that devotion is sufficient to uh, reveal to us the spiritual nature of Krishna to some degree. Uh, so, this is the method that the Lord gives so that we can perform bhakti and concentrate on serving the Lord with an understanding of his form, qualities, and activities. That is through the scripture. Uh, so in the case of Brahma, he could not see the Lord, but then he meditated on the Lord. How could he meditate on the Lord if he didn't know about his form? Obviously, he must have had some memory uh, from previous lifetime or whatever of the form of the Lord to meditate on. So uh, he was very fortunate. Uh, in our case, uh, we have to rely on scripture. Uh, and from that we get an idea of the form, qualities, and activities of the Lord. And then we can meditate or chant or do any other devotional activity. Uh, so this is the way in which we can uh, gradually develop in spite of the fact that the Lord has not directly revealed himself to the uh, devotee. Uh, so the, uh, nevertheless, the person doing sadhana uh, through that process comes to the stage of bhava. So bhava is called sudurlaba, or very rare, or uh, uh, the Lord himself is not revealed uh, by endeavor. It's by his will, he will reveal himself. <laughs> so we go through the process of sadhana, and we should not think automatically, then we get a right to see the Lord. It's still his will. Even in bhava stage, if we get to bhava stage, the Lord will reveal himself by his will. And therefore, he doesn't reveal himself all the time. Sometimes he's there, sometimes he disappears. Huh? So again, it's still the will of the Lord. Nevertheless, the definition of bhava is that one can directly see the Lord, even if it's once. So uh, one is at least qualified to some degree to see the Lord at that stage. Huh? Uh, nevertheless, the Lord, uh, it's up to his will when uh, and how he wants to reveal himself, even at that stage. Huh? Uh, so ultimately, it is the will of the Supreme Lord which is uh, prominent in all cases. Huh? But we have a description of the process of sadhana. We go through sadhu sangha and bhajana kriya and anartha vritti, nishta ruchya sakti, and then bhava. Bhava is the result, which looks predictable. Huh? Uh, we go through a certain process, we get a certain result, uh, and then the Lord reveals himself. Huh? So it looks, uh, let's say, um, as if uh, the Lord is under control. We do our efforts, and we get to bhava, then the Lord reveals himself. He must reveal himself. <laughs> But the whole process of bhakti also is under the mercy of the Lord, again. Huh? So to, to go to uh, the different stages of like nishta, ruchya, sakti, and then to bhava also requires mercy. Hmm? So generally that mercy is through the devotees. Huh? But it's actually Krishna's mercy. Hmm. The devotee's mercy is not other than the Supreme Lord's mercy. Uh, transmitted through the devotee. Hmm? So we know that to go from one stage to another bhakti, to get from shraddha to bhava, requires mercy of devotees. Huh? So again, uh, we get mercy very, very evident in the uh, revelation of the Lord. Huh? Uh, so uh, that, of course, is even confirmed in the Brahma Sutras. The question is asked, what is a more... Uh, prominent mercy or endeavor and the answer is mercy <laughs> it's the prominent thing for revelation of the Lord it's the mercy of the Lord ultimately doesn't mean we don't do any endeavor we don't make any endeavors but 
uh, even if we do the endeavor, mercy of the Lord is necessary. Huh? And that, of course, is represented in Dhammadar pastime. The two fingers represent endeavor and mercy. It's not only endeavor, uh, but mercy must be there. Uh, mercy is there. Why? Because the endeavor is there. So the two things go together. So in this way, uh, we do sadhana bhakti with great endeavor, and then uh, the mercy definitely is there in the form of devotee's mercy and later on the mercy of the Supreme Lord himself in the Baba stage. And this way, the Lord becomes revealed. In the highest sense, if a real pure devotee, he never likes to see the Lord. That's what we have been hearing from different... Can we understand that Brahma is not in that level because he wants to see the Lord? We have to act oh, in such a well, way. Well, seeing the Lord... Um, actually is a little general term because generally, of course, it's not just we want to uh, have like uh, Sarupya, Samipya, and Sarsti, etc., which are types of liberation. So the devotee is, uh, desire is to serve the Lord. Mm. But uh, generally that service requires uh, the presence of the Lord uh, to serve him directly. So, therefore, we say seeing the Lord or meeting the Lord or attaining the Lord, uh, 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 um, you attain me, etc., in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, that is not simply one gets to the planet of the Lord finished. Uh, it actually implies, if we're doing pure bhakti, that uh, we engage in service to the Lord in the spiritual world with the spiritual body, etc., but the main element there is the service. So when we talk about seeing the Lord, etc., also, it must have been service to the Lord. In the case of Brahma, of course, uh, his particular service was creating the bodies for the living entities in the material world, and he couldn't do that. So his service was also interrupted. So uh, he, is, he wants to see the Lord or get inspiration from the Lord in order to do that. So seeing is not just let me see the Lord and not do anything, but rather... Uh, somehow uh, through seeing the Lord also engage in a service properly. Can we understand this? Uh, like questioning the Lord is not proper actually. Why you are not revealed to me? A real devotee will just say, whatever you do, like Mahaprabhu sister a prayer, whether you embrace me or not embrace me, I'll be a devotee. But if you see in this prayer, in every sentence he says, I was searching for you, you didn't show me your form. Uh, the shows are still in well, the sometimes questions are asked in a rhetorical mood, which means rhetorical means they don't really require an answer uh, and, uh, or they uh, indicate not that one doesn't know anything, uh, but rather they express the uh, mood of the speaker uh, and, and they're not uh, definitely there to wait for an answer from somebody like that. So that's the mood here of Brahma. The questions are there to express his Dependence on the Supreme Lord. Huh? Uh, ultimately, uh, the Lord will reveal himself whenever he wants to, not because of our self. So it's expressed in the form of a question. Though, uh, Brahma is not expecting uh, Krishna to answer this as a, 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 and give an explanation at this point. Uh, Maharaj, uh, it is mentioned in the second count of Srimad Bhagavatam that Brahma has meditated on the Virat Rupa of the Supreme Lord, the universal form of the Supreme Lord. Uh, if he has meditated on the Virat Rupa, and also it's at the end of the second quarter, it's mentioned, I mean, the, in the chapter it's mentioned, it is, I mean, it is not permanent, it's not eternal. So if Brahma has meditated on that, how could he get Bhakti Maharaj? Is it possible meditating on Virat Rupa to get Bhakti? I mean, on the universal form? Huh. Oh, well, um, there, there's, uh, there's a description of the universal form in the second canto, uh, but it doesn't say that he meditated only on that form. Sri uh, no. Prabhupada writes in the commentary that, I mean, he, he was meditating on... Hmm. Because he saw uh, the, the spiritual form of the Lord. Hmm? So the uh, universal form is actually a conception for immature yogis. <laughs> So they're not, not a very advanced stage at all, simply to meditate on that. It may be part of the meditation of Brahma simply because the universal form represents the universe and all of its particular elements which Brahma has to put into place, only for that reason probably. Uh, this is not related to Bhagavatam, 
like we have chatushloki bhagavad gita also did krishna actually spoke chatushloki bhagavad gita to arjuna or he spoke the 700 verses hmm? we have chatushloki i mean i mean we have four important shlokas of uh, bhagavad gita right they hmm. i mean devotees is called chatushloki bhagavad gita yeah. so did krishna spoke chatushloki bhagavad gita to arjuna or 700 verses he spoke the whole thing whatever uh, creation is only the lord's mercy to enable the jeevas to come back to him so as such when we see that even uh, jeeva having a desire to attain him is only his mercy no the the, the we can say it manifests through the mercy of devotees but ultimately uh, there is always a choice on the part of the particular person so uh, example is given of the rain the rain falls everywhere but it doesn't uh, the seeds don't sprout in all places only in certain places uh, so the devotees may be merciful some people take the mercy some people don't so that's their choice they can take the mercy so we can have a get to sukriti even we don't have to accept it and we don't have to get influenced by it also huh? so we do have some choice huh? at the same time of course there is also mercy there in the form of devotee's mercy Yeah. So the mercy obviously comes from outside uh, from ex from another person the, the lord or another devotee. Huh? Well, we can say they bestow some inspiration, some shakti, uh some spiritual uh insight etc to the devotee. Hmm? I am impetus. It may be the bhakti shakti itself, uh, some mm -hmm. devotion maybe Uh, given by the de devotee to the other person. As far as the uh, mercy in terms of Krishna revealing himself, um, how much is it with the devotee? uh giving the mercy or or krishna he decides separately or because of the mercy of, and the desire of the devotee that krishna feels obliged or in his own relationship with that devotee uh that he he, he feel that he is captured by the devotee's attraction and the intensity of his desire Well, generally it's through the devotees that the mercy manifests unless one comes to bhava stage where the Lord directly interacts with the person. Before that stage, the mercy of the Lord is goes through the devotees of the Lord. That's the normal method. There are exceptions also, uh, but generally will operate through the devotees. Of course, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, you know, I will give you the intelligence by which you come to me. Uh, Uh, and i reveal myself in the heart and i, I take away the darkness etc and in the uh first canto it says there that uh, the lord uh, resides in the heart and personally destroys all the obstacles so that you can progress in bhakti from anartha to vritti nishruchi sakti etc uh, so you know the lord is there but generally uh, it is difficult for the devotee to perceive him properly Uh, so the Lord is functioning as Bhagavan to help the devotee, but we don't really perceive it, uh, uh, and we're more likely to um, perceive externally. So therefore, we have the external guru, the external devotee, and that's the uh, the prominent source of mercy in the beginning stages. But the, we can't say that the Lord is never there; He also is there. But uh, it's beyond our because we're covered over so much, uh, we can't perceive His mercy. Uh, 
because we see in this verse, you know, this when he went, Brahmaji went down, he saw, uh, he didn't see anything at the beginning. Later, when he performed his austerities, then only uh, he saw the Supreme Lord. Can you say that, you know, that, uh, you know, he attained Prema, then only he saw the Supreme Lord, Brahma? Well, if we see that if one sees the Supreme Lord, we have to, and uh, we uh, we must uh, understand that he must be on a higher level of the Baba or Prema. Mini, mini but we don't know. We don't know exactly what stage he was at. Maybe he was already qualified with Prema itself. Who knows? We don't know. If it, if he is Prema also, because suppose take it Baba or Prema means he he has a spiritual body now, not the material body. No, one can have Prema or Baba in the material body. In other words, devotee does sadhana, he gets to bhava and prema, he still has his body here until he gives that up, and then he gets a spiritual but body he, in the spiritual world. He, he developed this spiritual body. Huh? He developed this spiritual body. Just obviously, if we see the Lord, he must have spiritual senses. Yeah. yeah. So if it is he has a spiritual senses, sometimes we see, you know, some you know, materialistic person, they worship Brahma, you know, but who is a, in his, who has a spiritual senses, and they can see him face to face also. That person who meditated uh, uh, Brahma, especially like you see, so many are there in the material world for, to get the benediction there. Oshi Brahma. So, but Brahma is in a higher level, who is in, a, you know, who has a special senses, we can say, if he sees the Supreme Lord. So, how is it possible for the materialist person to see the uh, Brahma's even? Well, just like if devotee. a devotee in the material world attains Bhava or Prema, people can still see him. Even materialists can see him. Mm -hmm. Everybody can see him. Dilva Mangal Thakur, they can see his body there or whatever. And you can see devotees even if they're in the material world and they have prema. You know? They can still be seen by other persons. But they, not, they don't appreciate them. But nevertheless, they can see their physical body. Like, you know, when Krishna was in Kurukshetra, so many people saw him but could not appreciate him. Hmm. Same thing? Well, the materialist sees Krishna. Obviously, Sister Paul sees Krishna. So many people see Krishna. They don't see the spiritual form. But, still, the Lord is merciful. And even if they see that form, it says that everybody who saw Krishna got liberation at least. <laughs> That's their blessing. In spite of the fact that they're demons and they don't really appreciate him, they can still get some benefit from that. Is there, is there proof that, you know, this Brahmaji, he performed... Bhakti yoga means devotional service uh, while, while meditating this, by, this process, medi by this meditation process. Is there any proof like this? Because sometimes people say, you know, Mayavadi might take it and depend on that. He, may, he was meditating means he took the process of yoga, something like that. Well, it's directly described that he meditated on the Supreme Lord in the second candle. <laughs> it wasn't just he, he stood on one leg or something. He said he meditated on the Lord. He was pronouncing some mantra. Whatever, and he meditated on the form of the Lord. So can you say that this is like a Paramatma realization? Hmm? Realization of the Paramatma, this he is uh, Paramatma realization. It doesn't say that, he just meditated on the Lord, that's all. And then Vishnu revealed himself uh, with the spiritual world or whatever. The Lord giving mercy to people like Kamsa also. So does it mean that the Lord's mercy is available in various degrees for the jivas according to his own whims and practices, which makes one to endeavor or even to understand uh, the Lord. Well, there are special cases when the Lord comes as avatar. He may give special mercy, and Krishna is very special. And so when he kills the demons, they may get liberation or go to the spiritual world. But those are special cases. It's all, all ultimately the will of the Lord. Normally, it is through sadhana. That's the normal case. So to we even to make endeavor, that sadhana, somebody should have the mercy of the Lord, Guru Maharaj. Huh? To even endeavor for that sadhana, somebody should have the mercy of the Lord. Without that, mercy of devotees. 